Uh, let's work a quick example here uh, on straight line depreciation so we can see uh, how this works in practice. So let's say we purchase some equipment for $100,000 and it costs $10,000 to have it delivered and installed. Thus, the initial basis is $110,000. Right? This is our cost basis. You believe that you can sell the equipment for $17,000 when you're done with it in six years. So this is the life that we, the expected life of the asset. The company's marginal tax rate is 40%. What's the depreciation expense each year and the after-tax salvage value in year six? So we've got a couple of things, right? Well, we'll write down the cost basis. This is what the asset initially cost, and this includes both the equipment cost and the setup cost. We're allowed to depreciate both of those things. And the expected salvage, this is what we think we can sell it for. Now again, this is decided in advance. We're saying we think we'll be able to sell it for $17,000 when we're done with it in six years, but of course we don't actually know until we sell it what we'll be able to recover. So we want to know what the depreciation expense is in each year, and we're going to use straight line depreciation to calculate that. where straight line depreciation in every year is equal to the cost basis of the asset minus the expected <laughs> excuse me <laughs> minus the expected salvage value divided by the number of years that we expect to use the asset and now we can plug that in we have a cost basis of $110,000. We have an expected salvage value of 17,000. And we expect to be able to use the asset for six years. And so our depreciation per year is $15,500. This is depreciation expense per year. That's part one. Part two is, what is the after-tax salvage value? Now remember the after-tax salvage value is what we're able to recover from the asset after taxes when we sell it. Because we may have to pay taxes on the sale if the actual sales price exceeds the book value of the asset at the current time of sale. So. We're moving forward six years. We're done with the asset, we're gonna sell it. And let's just say for convenience that we were exactly right. The actual sales price is the same. What we actually sell it for is exactly what we expected to do. So we expected to sell it for $17,000 and our actual sales price was 17,000. We hit it right on the nose. Now, of course, we should acknowledge that this almost never happens and that we would almost always be wrong about our expected salvage value. However, let's make it easy on ourselves when we're learning. Good. So we've got our year six, we've got our after tax salvage value. And after tax salvage value is equal to the actual sales price or the actual salvage minus the tax rate that the firm has times the difference between the actual sales price and the final book value. Okay. So we can plug that in. We sell the asset, actual sales price, 17,000. Firm has a tax rate of 40% times the difference between the actual sales price, which is 17,000, and the final book value. This is what the asset is listed as being worth on our books. Now, to calculate the final book value, we have to see how we have depreciated the value of the asset on our books. So, in the at first, at right when we bought the asset, the first year, the value on our books was the cost of the asset, the cost basis. We paid 110,000 for the asset. That's how we list it in terms of value on our books. 
But over, year, over the years, we subtract the depreciation expense every year. And at the end of the asset's life, we subtracted accumulated depreciation expense for all six years. So I've subtracted six years of depreciation. And that is what the asset is currently now listed on my books for. So to calculate that, I look at the cost basis, 110,000. I subtract the accumulated depreciation. And all that means is six years of 15,500. Right? That's what accumulated means, all of the depreciation. So 15,500 every year. I did that depreciation for six years. And so I end up with 110,000 minus 93,000 of accumulated depreciation. And I get a final book value of 17,000. So now I can come and plug that in here, minus 17,000. This becomes zero. I pay no additional taxes and my after-tax salvage value is simply the sales price. Okay. Now, again, this is by design. Why is my final book value 17,000? It's precisely because that's what I depreciated towards. I expected to be able to sell it for 17,000, and so I depreciated my asset exactly in the order uh, so that I would have a final book value of what I thought I was gonna be able to sell it for. So as long as you're allowed to depreciate the asset or able to depreciate the asset for the full life, and if you have an expected salvage value, you will depreciate the asset to the expected salvage value. And then the final book value will be exactly that. And if you get lucky, of course, and you sell the asset for exactly what you thought it was worth, then you pay no additional taxes.